and we're on. So hi, everyone. Welcome to Hotez. This is DJ Kapulkin filling in for JD Christensen. And this is Taylor Swift. No, uh, it's actually way better. Um, it's uh, Chaitanya Lina Subramanian, who will speak about dependently typed algebraic theories and their homotopy algebras. So stage in the moment are all yours. Thanks, Chris. Uh, and thanks for uh, giving me this uh, opportunity to talk about uh, something that I've been thinking about for the last few years. I think I first gave a talk on this subject, um, at least the dependently typed algebraic theories stuff at the, the, the original hot conference in 2019. And this, for people who have heard that stuff, well, uh, you might be a little bored in the beginning, but uh, I assure you that there's some new stuff as well in here. And for those who haven't heard it, well, here's your chance. Um, right, so uh, I don't think I need to convince this audience uh, that the best candidate today for a formal space theory is uh, hot. Uh, and of course, hot is expressed using Martin Loeff's language of dependent types, right? So the identity type just to define it needs a notion of type dependency. So when doing algebra formally in hot, uh, it's reasonable to ask that we be able to use the full expressive power of dependent types. And so uh, it's somewhat natural to expect that the generalization of multi-sorted algebraic theories from set theory to uh, hot, to space theory, uh, should be dependently typed. They should incorporate type dependency in their uh, syntactic definitions. Uh, well, this, of course, begs the question, uh, what uh, exactly is a dependently typed algebraic theory? Is there a nice definition of such a thing? And of course, uh, the font set origo of hot is its models in spaces. And so if we have a good notion of dependently type algebraic theory, we should also have a good notion of its uh, space value models or their space value models. And I'll reframe this question slightly uh, for today in the following way. Given a dependently type algebraic theory, is there a model category that presents its uh, models in spaces? And so its models in spaces should be an infinity category since the category of spaces is an infinity category, the or infinity topos. Um, there are many syntactic answers to the first question. It's probably starting earliest with uh, Cartmel's generalized algebraic theories. Maybe there's something earlier that I'm not aware of. And I'm sure people in the audience are more, uh, uh, that, you know, there are, there are experts in the audience that could correct me on this. Uh, there are, uh, Mackay's folds vocabularies, which are also fundamentally dependently typed. Uh, a more algebraic definition of such a gadget is Fiore's sigma n models with substitution. And then there are other syntactic uh, definitions of what algebraic, uh, dependently typed algebraic theories should be, including, uh, for example, quotient inductive inductive types. Today, I'll use a definition that's a strict subclass. So I'll use a notion of dependently typed algebraic theories that are strict, that, that form a strict subclass of all of these things. And so they're less general, uh, but happily they are equally as expressive when it comes to their models in sets. So this is what I mean when I say that Morita equivalent to, uh, to GATS, to generalized algebraic theories. Moreover, they have a nice algebraic description. Actually, they have several nice algebraic descriptions, and I'll come to that. And of course, uh, the last bit of this talk is that we can set up a, a fairly uh, elegant homotopy theory of their models in spaces. And in fact, the definition that I'm going to use is one that's been around for a while, and it, I think, first appears uh, as Fiore's sigma zero models with substitution. Although again, if there are experts that know of prior reference, I'd be happy to uh, hear of that. There are a few answers to the second question. In fact, 
I probably know only one uh, good, satisfying answer, somewhat satisfying answer, which is that by combining a few results, it's possible to uh, say that the space-valued models or a particular notion of space-valued models of a dependently typed algebraic theory form a, a presentable or uh, in particular locally finitely presentable infinity category. Uh, this construction is extremely general. It works for a very general notion of dependently typed algebraic theory, but uh, it, uh, it or rather these constructions uh, result in uh, a quasi category and it's um, not straightforward, at least not to me, to see how uh, the uh, presentable quasi category that one obtains at the end uh, can be directly linked to the original syntax that we start off with. And uh, so, so we can ask for a more direct way to get from a syntactic pres presentation of a dependently type algebraic theory to a combinatorial model category of its uh, space valued models. Uh, here's a rather important caveat, which is that in this talk, I will only talk about discrete dependently typed algebraic theories. So I'm really considering a very simple case. And I, when I say discrete, I mean uh, discrete in the same way that ordinary multi-sorted algebraic theories are discrete infinity categories with finite products versus something like simplicial uh, algebraic theories. And set operads are discrete infinity operads. And the hope is that adding identity types to the syntax that uh, corresponds to the algebraic gadgets that I'm going to describe uh, should give us all non-discrete dependently typed algebraic theories in a way that uh, gen uh, that combines well with what I'm going to talk about today. Okay, so let's get to the definition of dependently typed algebraic theories. And here it is, a definition. A dependently typed algebraic theory is the data of a type signature C and a C-typed theory. Well, that's not very helpful. Uh, so let's see what a type signature is. A type signature is a small category that is direct and whose slice categories are finite. So um, a direct category is a category that's one way and well-founded in that its morphisms all point in one direction. Uh, and there are no infinite descending chains of non-identity morphisms, which is nicely uh, captured by this uh, slick definition. And uh, so I'll call a type signature a uh, locally finite, maybe that's slight abuse of terminology, but I like uh, using this terminology, a locally finite uh, direct category. These uh, categories were also considered by Mackay, they're exactly the notion of simple category from Mackay up to an opposite. Uh, so Mackay calls simple categories uh, exactly the opposite of what I call type signatures. Uh, and uh, uh, given a type signature C, a C type theory is nothing but a finitary monad on the category of pre sheets of sets over C. So contravariant pre sheets of sets. And this is a somewhat familiar definition. Uh, and this I mean, should be familiar to people uh, who know a little bit of universal algebra, which is that this is just a straightforward generalization of uh, the notion of multi-sorted algebraic or Lobier theory, which is that, which is uh, as uh, the data of a set of sorts and a on sets over the set of sorts. Of course, every set is a discrete uh, category and as such is a type signature. The definitions of type signatures and uh, uh, dependently typed algebraic theories are based on a duality, a kind of fundamental duality between uh, cellularity and uh, type dependency, which involves going to opposite categories. Uh, so, for example, here, take the syntactic dependent type signature that I've written out here, which is pretty clearly written out in the language of dependent types. Uh, it obviously corresponds to 
graphs. Even naively, it's possible to see this. Um, and of course, a graph is nothing but a pre-sheaf on a locally finite direct category. It's, it's a category with two uh, objects and two non-identity morphisms that point at the same direction from one object to the other. Uh, similarly, uh, here's the type signature for uh, two truncated semi-simplicial types. And once again, it's clear that this thing is a cellular object, right? Uh, uh, two truncated semi-simplicial uh, type or semi-simplicial set, if you like, has uh, zero uh, semi-simplices, cells in dimension zero, one, and two. And more generally, the, uh, uh, the, the generalization of multi-sorted algebraic theories to dependently sorted or dependently typed algebraic theories is uh, what happens when we uh, generalize the point of view of uh, multi-sorted algebraic theories as Cartesian multi-categories, that is as um, multi-categories whose, uh, whose combination of objects is the Cartesian product and whose multimorphisms look like uh, operations that take as input uh, a co-product of point, something of dimension zero and that output a point to uh, uh, a notion of cellular Cartesian multi-category where uh, operations take as inputs cell complexes or finite cell complexes, if you like, and uh, that output cells. And this is closely uh, related to uh, the, the notion of uh, T operads like globular operads and so on. In fact, globular operads are a particular example of dependently typed algebraic theories. Uh, the intuition is, uh, goes as follows. So uh, I'll say that uh, inverse category is just the opposite of a direct category. Objects of a direct category represent cells of some kind of shape, and morphisms of a direct category are subcell inclusions. And objects of an inverse category are dependent types, and morphisms of an in inverse category uh, represent type dependency between types. And the local finiteness condition just says that every type of the signature is first of finite dimension. It's every cell is of finite dimension, and every type is defined in a finite context of variables. And that is the same thing as saying that it has finitely many subcells. And here are a few examples of this uh, definition of type signature. Uh, of course, every set is a discrete category, and so it's locally finite and direct. Uh, every, uh, so the ordinal omega seen as a poset is a, a type signature. The category of globes is, of course, a type signature, and any subcategory thereof is a type signature. Uh, the category of opitops, slightly more exotic example, is a type signature. Uh, every reedy category has a wide direct subcategory, and in many examples, this direct subcategory is locally finite, uh, such as the semi simplex category obtained from the simplex, the category of simplices, uh, the planar semi dendrex category and uh, the wide subcategory of monomorphisms of uh, Joyal's theta. Of course, given a type signature, then every uh, pre-sheaf uh, has as its category of elements uh, another type signature. Right, so uh, given a type signature, here's a, a, a quick construction of the syntactic uh, contextual category associated to that type signature. And I'm gonna do this construction in the language of cell complexes. Um, and it goes as follows. So given a, a type signature C, define the category cell C to have a graded set of objects where the only object at level uh, zero is the empty pre-sheaf. And given an object at level N, which is uh, a uh, chain of morphisms of length n uh, given an object in C and a, a, a span at, like so. Uh, we choose a push out square of the, of the span giving a, a chain of morphisms of length n plus one, which is an object at level n plus one in cell C. And then we define morphisms between objects of cell C to just be morphisms of underlying pre-sheets. 
Now, this definition uh, turns out to give a, a, a co-contextual category, namely the opposite of cell C is the free contextual category on C. And when I say it's a free contextual category, I mean the following universal property, which is that for any contextual category D, uh, morphisms of contextual categories uh, from uh, CXC to D correspond to uh, contextual functors from C op to D. And a contextual functor is a D value pre sheaf on C uh, that takes every object of C to a context in D of the right height, of the right length, and uh, such that for every object in C, the associated parent projection in D is a morphism of limits corresponding to the boundary inclusion of the object of C. Right, uh, the boundary inclusion being uh, the, 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 the full subcategory of the slice category over C, uh, where we take out the terminal object without the terminal object. And so a semi simplicial type in any contextual category D is exactly a contextual functor from uh, the, so it is exactly a semi simplicial uh, pre sheaf, a semi simplicial diagram in D. That, that is a contextual functor. So semi simplicial type in D is a semi simplicial diagram in D that is a contextual functor. So uh, there is an obvious forgetful functor from cell C to pre sheaves on C uh, that just takes the underlying pre sheaf. Uh, and uh, this forgetful functor is fully faithful uh, uh, and exhibits cell C as a finite co completion of C. And this is because every uh, finitely presentable pre sheaf can be written as a finite cell complex since C is locally finite and direct. And uh, I'll say that a C theory is an identity on objects, a finitely co-continuous functor from cell C. And a morphism of C theories is just a commutative triangle. And it is a fact, this is a pretty general uh, uh, fact that can be understood via the theory of uh, monads with arities and Lovier theories with arities, for instance, uh, that the category of C theories is equivalent to the category of finitary monads on pre sheaves on C and all monad morphisms. And so uh, finally, I'll define what I mean by a dependently typed algebraic theory. And it's going to be uh, via this definition that's called a C contextual category. And the C contextual category is a morphism of contextual categories from the uh, syntactic category on the type signature C, uh, whose identity on objects fully faithful factorization uh, is such that for every commutative diagram like so, where G is a morphism of contextual categories and H is any functor, uh, there exists a unique uh, morphism of contextual categories that makes uh, that uh, that goes like so, and makes the diagram commute. The idea here is that uh, the uh, contextual category D is, in some sense, completely determined by the identity on object functor JF. Uh, in, in other words, it can be described as a contextual completion of this identity on objects functor of the C theory, and this is the universal property associated to uh, the contextual completion. Uh, it can also be seen as a certain kind of semi-final lift, which is something that Mike pointed out to me and that I didn't, I hadn't noticed, uh, Mike Shulman. And a morphism of, of C contextual categories is just a morphism in the co-slice. So in the co-slice under the uh, syntactic category over C. And so uh, the final result is that given a type signature C, the categories of finitary monads on pre sheaves on C, uh, C theories, and C contextual categories are all equivalent. And so this uh, provides a very nice 
the recognition theorem for dependently typed algebraic theories. Uh, I think I uh, alternate between calling them dependently sorted and dependently typed. Sorry for that. And this recognition theorem is pretty powerful because it allows us to spot uh, dependently typed algebraic theories in the wild simply by taking pre sheaves on a type signature and recognizing some well known uh, finitary monads. So, for example, of course, every S sorted algebraic theory for a set S is an example. Uh, but we also have examples of uh, identity monads on graphs, globular sets, octopic sets, semi simplicial sets. Uh, uh, the, the free category monad on graphs, the free strict omega category monad on graphs. And of course, given a Cartesian uh, uh, finitary monad, every uh, Cartesian finitary monad T, every T operad is also a finitary monad in particular. Uh, uh, and so uh, um, let me rephrase that given a, a finitary Cartesian monad on the topos every T operad is a, a, a finitary monad. And so globular operads are uh, in particular examples of uh, dependently typed algebraic theories. Uh, and uh, another interesting example is that given uh, growth and decay coherator, the associated globular theory uh, is also a dependently typed algebraic series. And in fact, there are many more examples. Uh, if you look, hard enough, you'll see that all the examples that I've listed here are of finitary Cartesian monads. But of course, the dependently typed algebraic theory doesn't have to be have to correspond to a Cartesian monad. And so uh, there are also examples like the uh, like some of the nervous monads considered by uh, Bork and Garner, uh, uh, including monads for uh, weak omega groupoids on globular sets. Right, so uh, let me get to models, but maybe maybe I should give you a non-example of a dependently typed algebraic theory before I get to models. And I'll try to give a syntactic non-example. Right, so the idea is, I hope you can see the, my notepad. Apologies, my tablet seems to have uh, disconnected from my computer at exactly the right time. Uh, yeah, there we go. So uh, take, for instance, the type signature for graphs, right? G1 is a type in the empty context and in a context, or G0 rather, and in a context X, Y of type G0, uh, G1 is a type, right? Let's then say that we have a, a term constructor uh, that is, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, star of type G0. Uh, uh, some kind of composition operation, um, let's say X of type G zero. And then here, uh, let me take two uh, arrows F and G of type G one X star. And you notice that for the first time, one of the contexts on the left uh, uh, uses among its dependencies, uh, term construction that has been introduced uh, previously. So there's some kind of induction induction going on here. Uh, and so let's say that there's some kind of composition operation F plus G of type G X star. Uh, and let's say moreover that this thing is uh, commutative is equal. And this is a definitional equality to G plus F, right, type G X star. And so uh, I claim this thing is not a dependently typed 
uh, algebraic theory, at least not over the category of graphs. So this is non example of a, a G one type theory, or at least this is. And so uh, let, maybe I'll let people think about why this thing is not finitary monadic over, over, over graphs. Sorry, is, is, is the problem that some of the axiom are written in like contexts that are not? Yeah, that's that's okay. the idea. So the, the idea is that this thing is is in some sense some kind of monadic decomposition, but a two-step monadic decomposition over graphs, right? The first thing adds this, this constructor, and the second thing adds a constructor to algebras over the first thing. That's the that's the idea. Okay, thanks. So, uh, I mean, maybe I'll not let the cat out of the bag, say why this is not monadic over graphs. I mean, yeah. Uh, right. So back to models. So models and uh, homotopy models of uh, dependently typed algebraic theory. So I claimed that uh, set models of homotopy uh, of dependently typed algebraic theories uh, were precisely uh, the same as set models of generalized algebraic theories, or in fact, essentially algebraic theories. Uh, and let me show you why that's true. But first, I need to tell you what a set model of a uh, dependently typed algebraic theory is. And it's the somewhat obvious definition, which is uh, that of a pre sheaf, uh, a, a covariant pre sheaf from the contextual category D to set, such that pulling back to a pre sheaf over CXC uh, takes the empty context to the terminal set and takes every chosen push out of a generating um, a, a type constructor uh, to a pullback square in set. So uh, uh, the boundary inclusion here is, of course, the uh, parent projection corresponding to uh, the dependent type C in the signature. And all we're saying is that these canonical push outs in cell C, which are the canonical pullbacks, in the contextual category CXC are taken to pullback squares and sets. And of course, a morphism of models is just a natural transformation. So then it's relatively easy to show that uh, models of a C contextual category are exactly algebras of the associated finitary monad on pre sheets on C, and uh, also set models of the underlying contextual category D. And that's a, a separate definition which only involves the uh, structure of a contextual category on D and not of the extra structure of being a, a C contextual category. Right, so those are set models. Let's see why these things are uh, Morita equivalent, why dependency type algebraic theories are Morita equivalent to all generalized algebraic theories or essentially algebraic theories. So, uh, it's well known that um, a category is locally finitely presentable if and only if it is the category of models of an essentially algebraic theory or of a generalized algebraic theory. And let's show that this is the case uh, if, it, uh, if and only if it is a category of models of some dependently typed algebraic theory. So one direction is of course obvious because the category of models of any dependently typed algebraic theory is the category of models of a finite limit sketch. So a finite projective sketch for every uh, co cone is a limit cone. What about the other direction? Uh, well, in the other direction, let's first consider the uh, non-full inclusion of semi-simplices into small categories and the associated semi-simplicial nerve functor that takes a category to a semi-simplicial set. Then for any small category, the slice category uh, or the comma category of uh, uh, A under the inclusion is exactly the category of elements of the semi-simplicial nerve of A. 
And so from what we saw earlier, uh, it is a type signature since uh, uh, the semi-simplex category is a type signature. And there is an obvious functor that takes uh, a, a chain of morphisms of length n in A to the target. Um, and it's a fact that the associated pullback functor between pre sheaf categories is fully faithful. And now I think you can see how we conclude, which is that given any locally finitely presentable category C, uh, it has uh, an accessible, fully faithful right adjoint to some pre sheaf category. And so it suffices to compose this fully faithful right adjoint with the fully faithful right adjoint that we've just constructed to obtain a, a, a full, fully faithful uh, monadic accessible functor from C uh, to uh, pre sheaves over a type signature. And so C is the category of algebras of a finitely idempotent monad on a, a delta prime over A. And so we're done. Now, how about models in spaces? Uh, oh, I have a fair amount of time. Right. So um, let's take the, the, the degenerate case of multi-sorted algebraic theories. And this is a well-known theory uh, due to uh, Badziok and Bergner and Resk and Schweder and other people. Um, uh, Let's so uh, let's call a simplicial T algebra just a, a simplicial diagram of T models. This is equivalently a finite product preserving functor from the syntactic category of the algebraic theory to uh, the category of simplicial sets. Uh, and let's say that a homotopy model of T is a functor that goes from the syntactic category of T to the category of simplicial sets uh, equipped with the kant quillen model structure and that takes finite products to homotopy products. And now it's a fairly nice thing about simplicial sets, uh, which is that all products are homotopy products, are homotopy limits. And so we can uh, express this condition of being a homotopy model by saying that the canonical map from uh, the image of the product object in T under F to the product simplicial set uh, is a weak equivalence of simplicial sets. We can add fibrancy conditions everywhere to, uh, if, if you want to talk about model structure, but at least we can uh, express the homotopy limit condition in this way. What about a general C contextual, uh, general dependently typed algebraic theory? So let's take a general type signature and let's do the obvious definition. Let's say that a homotopical C space is a simplicial pre sheaf on a, a covariant simplicial pre sheaf, if you like, on the syntactic category, such that the empty context is taken to a contractible simplicial set, and such that every chosen push out is taken to a homotopy pullback square. Right, that's the uh, uh, obvious homotopification of the definition of models and sets. Uh, and let's say, moreover, that a homotopical model of any C contextual category is simply a simplicial pre sheaf, a covariant simplicial pre sheaf on the underlying contextual category, such that when pulling back to uh, the uh, initial C contextual category, we get a homotopical C space. Uh, well, there's a slight subtlety with this definition, which is that we can't any longer uh, express this condition as a, uh, as a certain canonical map to the strict pullback of simplicial sets being a weak equivalence because pullbacks, unlike the products in simplicial sets are not in general homotopy limits. Uh, so we can get around this by introducing something a little subtle, uh, which is uh, going to be an intermediate uh, model structure on simplicial pre sheaves, uh, covariant simplicial pre sheaves, if you like, on the, uh, uh, the, 
the syntactic category over C. Uh, and when I say an intermediate global model structure, I mean a model structure that's uh, Quillen equivalent to, and that sits in between the projective and the injective model structure. Namely, uh, it's uh, vibrations, uh, projective vibrations, and it's co-vibrations are injective co-vibrations, and it's weak equivalences are level-wise. Um, right, so uh, given an object of C, its boundary is uh, an object in, the, in cell C, right? It's a finite cell complex, uh, uh, and therefore it is uh, representable in pre-sheaves over cell C. And so we can, on the other hand, we can calculate the same co-limit that's involved in constructing the boundary of an object of C, but this time in pre-sheaves over cells. And so we obtain this composite inclusion of some kind of boundary in quotes, which is a sub-representable of the representable boundary of C uh, in pre-sheaves over cell C. And let's say uh, that uh, a map of pre-sheaves over cell C is a flask vibration uh, if the associated pullback HOM map, uh, so the pullback HOM map is, uh, is the, the, the canonical map from simplicial set L, XC uh, to uh, the, the, the obvious pullback of mapping simplicial sets. Uh, so, uh, I hope this notation is clear, uh, is a Kahn vibration. And this thing looks a bit like a Reedy uh, condition in that uh, a, a certain map to a mapping object is a Kahn vibration. Uh, and it, it so happens that there is a model structure on simplicial pre-sheaves over cell C whose weak equivalences are object-wise and whose vibrations are exactly these things. And of course, any model structure is determined by its weak equivalences and uh, its vibrations. And there are some nice properties that this model structure satisfies. Uh, first, it is intermediate. It sits between the projective and the injective model structure uh, where the identity functors are Quillen equivalences. So, the identity functor is a left Quillen equivalence from the projective model structure to the intermediate one and from the intermediate one to the injective model structure. And moreover, uh, for the inclusion of C into cell C, both the uh, uh, Shriek upper star and upper star lower star adjunctions of simplicial presheaves are uh, Quillen adjunctions for the injective model structure on simplicial presheaves over C. And for people who uh, know about greedy model categories, the injective model structure on simplicial pre-sheaves over C is exactly the greedy model structure on simplicial pre-sheaves over C. This is because C is a direct category and it's, uh, so it's elegant greedy. Okay, great. So, so how does this help us? Uh, we've got a global model structure on simplicial pre-sheaves over uh, cell C that models uh, pre-sheaves of spaces over cell C, but we'd like to uh, model homotopy uh, 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 models of the initial contextual cat category, uh, namely homotopical C spaces. And uh, so we will set up a Baus field localization, a left Baus field localization of this model structure. And how do we go about doing it? Well, just like we constructed the sub-representable boundary of a representable boundary in cell C, we can construct a sub-representable context of any context in cell C, so any finite cell complex. And we define inductively the sub-representable by taking precisely the same push-out, but this time in uh, pre-sheaves over, uh, over cell C and using the sub-representable boundary. Right, so we can draw this diagram inductively, and then we just take push out at the back, and that gives us the uh, sub-representable context. And so the idea is that the sub-representable context 
encodes uh, the uh, the the homotopy limit that uh, that that we that 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 we're considering uh, for homotopical C spaces. And so uh, we define the model structure for homotopy C spaces uh, to be the left Bowes field localization of uh, the this intermediate model structure at uh, the, the the set of maps which are the the context uh, subrepresentables, the subrepresentable contexts, and uh, so we write it like so, and we call it fibrant objects, the uh, homotopy C spaces, and uh, it turns out that a fibrant object is a homotopy C space. Uh, uh, so uh, not that it turns out, this is just a general fact about Bowsby localizations. Uh, a fibrant object uh, uh, is precisely an object that is s uh, that, that is local with respect to this uh, set of maps, namely it is fibrant in the underlying intermediate global model structure, and every uh, map uh, like so is a weak equivalence of, of simplicial sets. Uh, and it is a fact that the upper star, lower star adjunction uh, between the intermediate global model structure and the injective greedy model structure, the injective model structure, uh, is a Quillen equivalence after Bowes field localization. So on the left, we Bowes field localize with respect to maps that are inverted by the left adjoint. And so on the right, we don't even, we don't need to Bowes field localize, and it and this possibly localization turns the Quillen adjunction into a Quillen equivalence. And so, um, uh, uh, and, and we have a final theorem, which is that if uh, F is a fibrant object of the local model structure, namely a homotopy C space, then it is a homotopic cull C space. The homotopic cull C space condition being this one, right? It's contractible. And uh, oops, sorry. Yeah, yeah. And it takes cho chosen pushouts to homotopy pullbacks. And let me see if yeah. So let's do that quickly. So if F is local, then uh, one of the subrepresentative contexts is the inclusion of the empty pre-sheaf over cell C into the empty context, which is a representable. Uh, of cell of uh, in pre sheaves over cell C, and so well that thing being a weak equivalence is exactly saying that the image of the empty context under F is contractible. And then uh, if we take the definition of an arbitrary context and uh, uh, apply F to it, uh, we get this commutative cube in simplicial sets whose front face is Cartesian because. The the commutative cube in the definition had a co-Cartesian back face. Um, all the corners of the cube can be shown to be fibrant objects, and uh, the rightmost map in uh, front is a Kahn vibration, and so the front face is a homotopy pullback, and inductively the intervening arrows are weak equivalences, and so the back face is also a homotopy pullback, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, right, so that those were homotopy models of the initial C contextual category. What about arbitrary C contextual categories? Uh, well, um, for an arbitrary C contextual category, we just consider uh, the uh, pullback of a, a pre sheaf on the underlying contextual category. Uh, I think there's an op that's mixed up somewhere here. Uh, apologies for that. Uh, um, so an underlying pre-sheaf such that uh, simplicial pre-sheaf such that pulling it back to the simplicial pre-sheaf over the initial C contextual category gives a homotopical uh, C space. And that turns out to be a model structure for homotopy D algebras for an arbitrary uh, C contextual category D. And so there is a question uh, which follows from something which is true for ordinary multi-sorted algebraic theories, which is, uh, a which is whether a homotopy, every homotopy D algebra is weakly equivalent to a simplicial D algebra, a strict simplicial D algebra. 
and this is a work in progress that I'll just talk about in the little time that remains. Um, so let me recall some uh, general theory, which is true for uh, ordinary multi-sorted algebraic theories. So given an S-sorted uh, an S-sorted algebraic theory, um, obviously the category, uh, the discrete category S uh, is uh, locally finite and direct. And it's pretty clear that the projective Reedy and injective model structures on simplicial presheaves over S coincide. It's just because S is isomorphic to S op. Uh, then there is an old uh, and well-known construction that allows us to transfer the model structure on uh, simplicial presheaves over S to the category of simplicial T algebras. Uh, and by the transferred model structure, we just mean that the vibrations and weak equivalences are detected, uh, created by the, uh, uh, the forgetful functor to simplicial presheaves over S. And this follows uh, from a construction due to Quillen, uh, which relies on the existence of a fibrant replacement functor uh, uh, in presheaves over S, simplicial presheaves over S, that preserves finite products. And so it passes, so it commutes with the uh, the forgetful function. Uh, and, and this then uh, allows us to show that the reflective adjunction that exhibits simplicial uh, T algebras as a full subcategory of uh, simplicial presheaves over the syntactic category uh, of T is a Quillen adjunction. And I think once again, there is something to do with ops I think this should not, this option be there. Here. But anyway, sorry about that. Um, whoops. Yeah. So uh, when S is a set, the model structure, the intermediate model structure that we've constructed is in fact just the projected model structure. Uh, and if we write the free functor from, uh, the syntactic category over S, that's the initial S sorted algebraic theory to uh, the algebraic theory T. Uh, then we can left Bausby localize uh, simplicial presheaves over S and simplicial presheaves. Oh, I think the op is okay, actually. <laughs> and simplicial presheaves over T op um, at the sets of maps uh, given by the uh, these, uh, oops, where are we? Yeah, these uh, boundary inclusions. Uh, so sorry, these sub representative contexts. And those encode uh, the homotopy product conditions uh, that uh, are involved in homotopy uh, T algebras. And this Bausby localization is the model structure for homotopy T algebras. And it's a well known theorem that. Uh, in this adjoint square where uh, all the adjunctions are Quillen adjunctions and the left vertical adjunction is just seen as a Quillen equivalent, uh, the right vertical adjunction is also a Quillen equivalence between the local model structure, uh, the, the Bausby localized model structure, um, simplicial presheaves over T and simplicial T algebras. And this is the well-known rigidification theorem for multi-sorted algebraic theories. So the question is, does it generalize to the case when uh, a C is a type signature that's not a set? Okay, so let, let C be a, a general type signature. Then consider the um, weak factorization system on set value species over C, whose left class is the, the class of monomorphisms. And this uh, weak factorization system exists because uh, the set of subrepresentables uh, of boundary subrepresentables is a cellular model in uh, uh, presheaves over C and uh, generates this particular weak factorization system. And this thing is even considered in Mackay's work on folds, where the, the maps in the right class are called fiberwise surjective. 
So along with the factorization system of whose left class is isomorphisms and right classes, all maps, this defines what's known as a combinatorial pre-model structure on ordinary pre-sheaves over C and whose co-fibrations are exactly the monomorphisms. The general algebra of uh, combinatorial pre-model structures or pre-model categories uh, ensures that the tensor product of locally presentable categories, which is nothing but the category of simplicial pre-sheaves, so the tensor product of locally presentable categories, where on the one hand we have pre-sheaves over C, and on the other we have uh, simplicial sets, uh, is a combinatorial pre-model category. And it turns out that the pre-model structure in this case is exactly the uh, Reedy model structure, which is the same as the injective model structure on simplicial pre-sheaves over C. And so now we can see the Quillen equivalence that we set up for uh, homotopy algebras, or homotopy models of the initial sequential category as being a rigidification theorem for uh, homotopy uh, CXC algebras. And we can do something similar for arbitrary C contextual categories. Uh, so mutatis mutandis, uh, we take the set of uh, images of the boundary inclusion under the free algebra functor. Uh, and so these are morphisms of uh, D models, so D models and sets. Uh, and we construct the combinatorial pre-model structure on the category of simplicial uh, D models, simplicial D algebras. This uh, uh, combinatorial pre-model structure turns out to be a weak model structure in uh, Simon's uh, sense. And moreover, it's uh, transferred along the uh, forgetful functor from simplicial D models to uh, uh, simplicial pre-sheaves over C. This, this generalizes uh, the, the case for ordinary multi-sorted algebraic series, which is just the original thing due to Quillen, except that the construction of the models, the weak model structure in this case is much simpler. Uh, and then we can left falsely localize the projective model structure on simplicial pre-sheets uh, over DOP and it turns out due to a very general result, which is entirely due to Simon, and it's not due to me, uh, that the uh, associated uh, Quillen adjunction uh, is a weak Quillen equivalence. And that is the rigidification theorem for uh, homotopy D algebras. So I think I'll conclude here, maybe just by describing some of the things that I'm thinking about right now. So one of the problems that I'm thinking about is that uh, algebraic theories, uh, certain algebraic theories correspond to uh, colored operads and uh, or uh, symmetric uh, multi-categories. Uh, and so there is a natural question with what are the symmetric cellular multi-categories that correspond to Cartesian uh, that, that are that should be some kind of subclass of well I mean some Cartesian uh, symmetric uh, some Cartesian multi cellular multi categories should be something like uh, dependently colored operands and is there a good way to characterize those things? Uh, the other thing I'm thinking about and this is again ideas that come from discussions with Simon uh, is that the contexts of a C contextual category can be seen as polygraphs in some sense, computads. And uh, there is a good reason to uh, consider these objects. And that reason is that they're related to a good notion of generic free factorizations uh, in, contextual in the contextual C contextual category D. Finally, uh, I'm also thinking about uh, completeness of homotopy D algebras. So homotopy D algebras are a kind of Siegel space-like condition, but there are Siegel spaces and complete Siegel spaces. So is there a good notion of complete uh, homotopy D algebras in the sense of RESC? 
And this has to do with certain things in uh, homotopy type theory that have been thought about by, among other people, Mike Shulman, Benedict Ahrens, Paige North, Dimitri Semensis, in a paper called the Univalence Principle. Uh, and I'm currently thinking about what this means for dependently typed algebraic theories. Uh, and I think I'll stop there. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. We're gonna do a silent visual applause. So please join me in thanking Britannia. And uh, yeah, we'll open floor to questions such as what does mutatis mutandis mean? But maybe this one can be left until the end. Uh, and for now, well, let's talk about Map. So if you have a question, <laughs> feel free to um, go. Hi, I, I think I have a question about the same uh, slide, uh, slide 48, uh, that also contains the phrase mutatis mutandis. You're muted, Titania. Oh, Am I muted? Just to double check. I mean, I know I'm not muted, but can people actually hear me? All we right. can hear you. So, okay. Somehow, somehow the mute shortcut doesn't seem to be working on my, I don't know, Zoom. And I select something. Uh, let me get rid of the videos so that I can see my zooms. How do I do this? Ah. Go away. Ah, okay, there we go. Uh, right, so this was slide four, T, uh, right here. Oh, sorry, it's actually about the next, yeah, the oh, next one. Okay. I was, this one, uh, right. Uh, yeah, what, is, what does weak equivalent equivalence mean? Is it hinting that one or both sides is not a genuine model? Yes, case? yeah, so so uh, simplicity, uh, but uh, algebras, are a, a combinatorial pre-model category uh, that are not always, or at least I don't think they're always uh, a, a model category, but they do always turn out to be a weak model category in Simon's sense, which is a strengthening of uh, combinatorial uh, of pre-model categories, the combinatorial two-sided weak model category. Okay. Because it's yeah. initial, basically, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly, yeah. Great. So the, the simplicial interval gives you the, the required. Yeah, Thanks. we could we could equivalently use the technology in your thesis, like they are yeah. just simplicially enriched. Yeah. Combinatorial. Mm. And, okay. Thanks. So I see that Jonas raised his hand. So let's go to Jonas. Yes. Uh, hi, Chaitanya. Very nice talk. Um, so I have three questions which I hopefully have short answers. So in the so is it correct that the strictification gives you the condition that instead of homotopy pullbacks uh, mm -hmm. in this diagram of models you get strict pullbacks where yep. um, and the condition is here that you map projection maps to fibrations. I mean, the model has to map to yeah. projection maps to fibrin. The yeah, so 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 the the fibrancy condition is a really vibrant uh, condition. Actually, that, that's what it turns out to be. So uh, remember when I said very briefly that this model structure is transferred along this forgetful thing. Uh, this is model structure here, and so this transfer thing ensures, along with the strict pullback stuff. That uh, that all uh, on the left you have the simplicial models of uh, the theory. Yeah, so okay. the things that that send the the canonical pushouts or pullbacks, if you like, to uh, strict pullbacks of simplicial sets, and then I say that some of those things are uh, um, are uh, vibrations and that they're, they're morphisms to a certain mapping object that are con vibrations, and so if I take strict pullbacks everywhere, then uh, the the, all the parent projections are sent to uh, can vibrations. I'm waving my hands. Yeah, yeah. So, but I think you see what, what I mean. Yeah. Uh, 
So the, the, the next question is, uh, so is there a difference between a model of a C contextual category and just the contextual category without the C? No, they're the same thing. Okay. And the third yeah. question is, so you, you mentioned colored operas. So I would have, uh, I mean, the more direct analog to, um, uh, to algebraic theories are kind of Cartesian multi-categories, also known as clones. Mm -hmm. Is there a yeah. reason that you're we're talking about operas rather than clones? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the reason is that I already know what uh, Cartesian multi-categories generalize okay. to in okay. the dependent sense. But I don't know what uh, operas generalize to in the dependent sense. Okay, you already know what clones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's basically the whole idea of your work. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. And so what do you expect to, do you expect certain things to be nicer for, for um, like in the, the linear setting in a sense? This is stuff that I've actually been talking about with Simo and Simo has some pretty revolutionary ideas about this okay. stuff. So, so I mean, I, I think that they're, they're, they're really cool. So uh, okay, looking forward to the next talk then. Maybe Simo can give that one. <laughs> I mean, I, I can say something very quickly. The, the main question is what kind of strictification theorem you get out of it. Like what we, what Chaitanya talked about today is like a Badger style certification, the analog of certification for Louvier theory, which is a, like, it's not a trivial statement, but when you apply it, it only gives you kind of trivial things. Uh, while what we were hoping is that there is a version of the, you know, certification theorem for Opera that's available, like, you know, the one that gives you the very cool stuff, like strict simplicial group correspond to group like A infinity algebra and this kind of thing. Ah, and you don't get this. Uh... No, we get some, we get the, the like the Bazier style certification for Lover theory. You know, we, we even have a certification theorem for abelian Sufficient so group, but it's not a very interesting, very useful statement. Uh, I, mm, okay. Yeah, I don't see the, the difference right now, but uh, maybe that goes too far. Yeah, let's talk about this some other time. Thanks. Maybe um, at least I, I feel like uh, syntactically um, what, what Simon was talking about uh, involves introducing identity types into the syntax the, instead, of, um, instead of judgmental uh, or definitional equalities. You can see uh, encoding judgmental equalities using identity types and then filling in coherences as doing ah. some kind of uh, resolution or cofibrant resolution of uh, of, uh, uh, yeah, something. So the, the difference between strict and weak identity types is a linearity thing. Yeah, yeah, that's what the what I mean. K does in actor it does it imposes a linearity on on pattern matching, I guess, and that's a similar related thing. Um, okay, thanks. All right. Any further questions for the speaker or as it turns out, it could be questions for anyone in the audience. Um, okay. Um, sure. So uh, I was curious about that example that you sketched out of, uh, uh, well, the non-example that you sketched out um, in the middle of the talk about the, the with the graphs. So I think According to some other, yeah, exactly. So I think like this, this would be a generalized algebraic theory, for example, right? Right, okay. So uh, by the way, you're still muted, but I, oh, I yeah. understand you said yes. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, so, I mean, the, so the issue you were saying was that, um, does it have anything to do with the last line or already the line before just because of the GX star? So, so maybe the, the, the most the succinct way of uh, talking about what the issue is, uh, think about defining, taking a graph and then defining the free model uh, on, of this theory on that graph. Well, you add an object in, right? That's the distinguished object. And then you say that uh, uh, morphisms or arrows to that distinguished object have a 
commutative composition relation. But of course, there are no morphisms to the uh, distinguished object. And so the monad is just the thing that adds a distinguished object to the graph, which whose algebras uh, then should just be um, uh, graphs equipped with a distinguished object. But clearly, algebras of this thing are graphs equipped with a distinguished object along with a, a, a commutative composition operation to that thing. OK, I see. But so then, clearly, yeah, this is putting ex extra structure on the algebras of the first thing. Right. But then you, you also said, uh, forget earlier or later uh, that that um, that all of these notions are more or less equivalent in in some sense right so so what would be going on in um, yes. there how would so, you yeah so, so so the proof of that thing involves changing the uh, the, the type signature so if I right. define a generalized algebraic theory like so the type signature that I'm going to obtain from from the Morita equivalence proof, Looks nothing like the uh, the type signature for graphs. So if you look look closely at the Morita equivalence proof, uh, let me share that slide. Um, here we go. Right. So the type signature here uh, is this. Uh, so uh, A, let's say, is something like. Uh, the category of finitely presentable objects of the uh, of the locally finitely presentable category that, that you're looking at, uh, then uh, this type signature has for every uh, chain of composable morphisms of length n a new type symbol. You see that, right? Because that's right. an object of this thing. And the idea is that uh, the uh, a pre sheaf on A is encoded by its action, uh, the, the actions of successively longer chains uh, of morphisms in A. Uh, uh, you, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that turns out to be a, a direct category that's locally finite. And so you're done. But it's really a, a very, uh, it, it's, uh, a construction that that throws away um, the syntax of a generalized algebraic theory and indeed even of an essentially algebraic theory if you construct your category as a category of models of such a thing. So in that sense, it's not a, not a very uh, nice construction. It's just a quick proof. Sure, sure. Yeah. So in this particular example, is there some sort of simple repair that that uh, that we could do or uh... that is a good question i'd have to think about that i know of some some simple repairs to other examples but this particular case uh, i'd have to think about but sure. maybe okay. if you want another example we could i could tell it to you now later i don't know when where there is a, a, a repair of sorts Right. Well, I'm interested, but maybe we can see if anyone else has questions yeah. first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll ask another question then. Um, I Wait, thought before that you I... do, before you oh. do, I just say, Chitanya, you don't have to mute yourself every single time. It's okay. Okay, and now we can proceed to the question. Uh, yeah. So I guess you kind of build this cell C, like some special appreciates on cell C. It's kind of like a blown up version of. Uh, some special pre sheets just on C, right? Uh, like another, a bigger category, model, model category that just presents the same thing. I thought maybe after that you were going to say something like, okay, but now we have a monad on cell C and we do some kind of transfer structure of model categories. But instead you did something involving this, yeah, this, right? Um, which to, I admit I didn't really follow the first time, so I kind of ignored. Uh, but then it turned out to be the ingredient in this proof too. So uh, I got a little lost there. Is there a way to do this using monads, uh, for example, or some other kind of syntax? Yeah. So uh, the idea here is that um, uh, cell C uh, is encodes some kind of syntax. It's the syntactic category of some some theory. 
And that theory corresponds to the identity monad of Cauchy Zonsi. And so what we're looking at is uh, exhibiting algebras of the identity monad uh, on pre sheets of spaces on C um, as uh, some kind of models over cell C. And the models over cell C are exactly these limit conditions, which are encoded by these things in the Bausby localization. And well, this bit, the, the first bit, which involves the boundary, uh, whatever the sub-representable boundaries uh, uh, of those sub-representable contexts that happen to be uh, generating boundary inclusions, that's uh, just required to uh, ensure that this thing is a quillinit adjunction. So it's just enough to send uh, fibrant objects to uh, greedy fibrant objects to inject, or, or the other way around, I forget. Send greedy fibrant objects, yeah. So, so injective fibrant objects uh, over here, um, yeah, to send them to fibrant objects in here, which are uh, a little um, uh, less. So, so this thing has less fibrant objects than the projective fibrant objects, right? And then the upper star functor also takes fiber objects in here to greedy fiber objects in here. Right. So this part, I think I followed at least by the end, but then I was not, I didn't quite follow what happened when you started talking about D, which was like an arbitrary C contextual hmm. category. Uh, and then there was like another transfer of. Yes. Yeah, this thing. No, yeah, that one. No, yeah, no, no, no. This sorry. One? Uh, maybe I think it was. One? That's the slide I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it was the first place that D appeared. Like, uh, maybe. Oh wait, I think I wrote. Did I write it down? No, I have this slide is... forty-two. Can you go there? I don't know. 40, 42? 40, 40. <laughs> no, no, forty-one. I guess. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This thing. Okay, right. So, so the idea here is that um, given the uh, morphism of, of theories that uh, exhibits D as a C-typed theory, uh, that's this thing. What it means to be a, a model of D is just that, uh, uh, is just, it, 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 the, the limit conditions all come from uh, limits in this category. That's the idea. Just like when you take a multi-sorted algebraic theory, being a model is just preserving certain limits that come from the initial uh, multi-sorted algebraic theory over those sorts, right? The, just those pro products. And that's the same idea. Yeah, so that's always, yeah, although this, Thing is saying is that if you if you pull back to the uh, initial uh, contextual category, then that thing is a homotopical C space. It's uh, it's 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 one of these fibrant guys. Is there a way to get? Uh, well, you already mentioned Siegel spaces. Could you see this as an example, like where the I mean the Siegel space conditions are all somehow involving the spine, but then the category yeah. structure comes from the fact that you have more maps. Is is that something you can see? So. So, so that's actually an interesting problem. Uh, the Siegel space condition, you can see it as, as being, um, uh, so, so of course categories are, uh, are theor uh, so the theory of categories is typed by the signature for graphs, right? Uh -huh. the, that, that's how you exhibit it as a finitary monad. You exhibit it as a finitary monad on graphs. Um, and so by this general framework, the, the category of contexts that you consider for the theory of categories is all finite graphs. Whereas you know that you can do with much less, you can do with just the, uh, the, the linear. Strings. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The, the filiform uh, finite graphs. Um, and in fact, you could do with even less. You could just do with the, just for one categories, you could do with the filiform graphs up to, I don't know, length three or something like that, right? Just the context that you need for the axioms. 
the axioms being uh, associativity, I think probably needs the longest context. Mm -hmm. um, and then for homotopical models, you can take all filiform finite graphs and, uh, and describe homotopical models using that subcategory of contexts. Um, and so the, the, the Siegel condition, you can see it as being uh, one of these uh, homotopical uh, algebra conditions on a subcategory of the context. So uh, the category D for, uh, uh, for, for, for categories or, or uh, categories internal to simplicial sets, if you like, mm -hmm. um, uh, would be a, a category that is much bigger than just the simplices. The simplices are a subcategory of that. And it turns out that that subcategory is nice enough to consider. And so, and so, so this is something that's been uh, puzzling me. Is there a good way to say when a subcategory of a contextual category uh, determines uh, the contextual category itself, the models of the contextual category, if you like? Just those contexts. And I think it has to do with this idea of presenting the theory syntactically. So if you know that you can present the theory using only certain contexts, well, then probably you can get away with just taking the subcategory on those contexts because you can write out all the axioms and morphisms in that subcategory and then that's enough. But that's just, a, that's just a weak intuition. Thanks. I think, I think that example with like the love ear theory of nothing and then the love ear theory of something is like a good, a good way to think about it. Thanks. All right, I see that Chaitanya has muted himself, but um, any other questions? We can revisit Carlos' question, uh, but if there are any other questions, maybe let's get there first. Okay, I think it's Carlos' question. Uh, so I forgot where we stopped um with that answer but maybe i'll let you pick it up <laughs> someone's okay uh, yeah so could uh crap my tablet has disconnected itself again this keeps happening Right, there we go. Uh, so fixing, uh, holes, no, not holes. Um, fixing, uh, non examples. Well, here's a, a somewhat, uh, I don't know if it's a silly non example. I mean, of course, it's not a non-example because it can be fixed, right? It is a finitary monad on the same, with the same signature. Uh, but take categories with a terminal object, right? So uh, the, uh, the obvious way to write that out is to say that you have a type, the same thing for graphs, right? You have G0 of type, and then XY of type G0, uh, G1. X, Y is type, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so blah, 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 that's the theory of categories. And the theory of categories does have this nice context, whatever, free context uh, thing where uh, contexts don't have anything in their dependencies except variables. But then you say that you have a terminal object. Uh, and the first axiom, of course, is just that you have something like this in G0. And the second axiom, what you naively write is that for every, uh, oh, sorry, you have, well, the second axiom is okay as well. It's a constructor for the terminal morphism. G0, you have something like uh, whatever this, which is a type G1, X to one. And then, uh, you have uh, 
finally, f, uh, sorry, x of type g0, f of type g1, and there this thing is not free anymore. You have x and 1 here. Uh, you would like to be able to say that f is equal to this thing. But of course, you can get around this using the composition operation of categories, right? All you need to do is say x, y of type g0, uh, f of type g1, x, y, uh, what is it? This thing of y composed with f is equal to uh, x, right? And with the right substitutions, you can show that this uh, uh, axiom that's not allowed uh, can be obtained from this axiom that's allowed with the right substitutions, some identity models, and so on. Great. Okay, thanks. This was very helpful. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, not GXY, it's GX1. But, but, but you see that the, the, the correction does rely somewhere on there being the structure of a category in here. Right, yeah, this doesn't generically work. Yeah, yeah. For, for like graphs, but it's an object, something like that. All right, final call for questions. All right, if nothing else, I just want to thank the speaker for teaching me how to express making necessary alterations while not affecting the main point issue. I know what that means, but I'll know what to say when I need to. Okay, thanks. Thanks, everyone.